So 2019, what's the name of the game? Deep Space. Deep Space, and the robot is? Voyager. Voyager, Voyager. get so, it? Yes. Deep Space, Deep Space Voyager. Voyager, I like that. Um, what's the game? Okay, so this game is a two part, two um, game pieces that we're playing with. Two here. very, very different. differently shaped game pieces. Um, first, you have to close certain portals yep. around, the, around the arena. There are openings in the cargo ship and in rocket ships on the side of the arena. And you have to Velcro this shield, this uh, uh, hatch cover, thank you, um, onto that opening, onto to, that portal to, 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 close, to close it. Right. Otherwise, if you don't do that, the um, ball, the game piece that you put in, will just roll back onto the field and become uh, not scored for your own team and may be accessible by the other So team. your robot has to be able to pick up both a shield mm -hmm. or hatch cover as well as a cargo correct cargo. and lift them up to uh, three different levels and the rockets there were three different levels yeah. right so um, and the very highest level was uh significantly higher than the robot so, yes uh, our robot this year used an elevator that's this mechanism that you can see here that would uh take uh an arm mechanism up and down and the arm had some uh, unique capabilities in the sense that it had a series of of, of uh, fangs that would allow it to grab and deploy the um, uh, the hatch cover, um, very sneaky. And then it also had a set of wheels that would suck up the ball and also deploy it. So it would also be able to pick that up using the same mechanism. Um, and the elevator itself, uh, obviously, uh, to extend, it's a two-stage elevator, extend up uh, uh, double the height of what you see here. And how about the end game? Again, a very different game. So um, at the end of the game, there are uh, climbing platforms. So just um, plain, ordinary. Flat like, tabletop yeah. platforms. Um, the tallest is maybe 30-ish, 32 inches off the ground. Right. And there are two other heights. And you have to get your robot up on top of that platform in any way you can. And do it quickly. And do it very quickly. The end game always happens quickly. So as you get further into competition, it is you have to be reliable and you have to be able to do it in a short amount of time. So unlike previous climbing games, there's nothing to hang on to. There's you, no pull up. The, here the, really you're, you're literally trying to, to crawl yourself up the stair unit yes. um, without, without the ability to hang on to anything. Some and teams I, went step by step by step. Some and teams some teams decided to do it all in one great big it. step. And that's what we had decided to do. And we used a mechanism that was unique in the entire field, yep. in that we used what we call stingers. That's these uh, vertical poles that were on what would be the back of the robot when we're climbing. Mm -hmm. And that would lift the back of the robot in a very precise fashion. And then to lift the front of the robot up and onto the platform, we created this unique um, apparatus that would swing up on top of the platform, and then as it swung around, would carry the robot up and onto the platform. Um, so a, a pretty clever way of getting the robot up and onto the platform. The duck was extra, um, and uh, it worked extremely well. Um, and the, the important thing was to synchronize the, the two mechanisms so that they would operate, obviously, in very different fashions, but at the same speed mm. so that the robot stayed level as it climbed up and onto the platform. I, I think there are two things that are remarkable about this season that need to be noted. The first is, you know, we typically make a very um, uh, robust robot, very mm -hmm. competitive robot, mm -hmm. but this year, for the first time ever, we had three female captains, Absolutely. number one, uh, duly elected by the team. Uh, one was our mechanical lead, one was our strategy lead, and one was our business lead. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they did an absolutely terrific job. Yep. Uh, uh, and one of the things that we found out was that through the course of our uh, competition in Mid-Atlantic, our scouting and strategy had become sort of renowned. It yes. was it was a particularly uh, a good setup that we put together and um, we had figured out how to take a large volume of raw data and convert it into information. And quickly. And quickly. Yes. And that information could be used to do real-time strategy yep. on the fly based on what we were seeing in the game or even with 
teams that we weren't observing directly. Right, and and this was one of the, we had been incrementing here yep. with our scouting data and our collections and what we were looking for. This was the first year where it really came together and I think the first community itself took a step forward in sharing yep. in the data and making it accessible to other teams. So we had access to, like you said, robots and other teams' performance that we had not seen. So typically in, in a, the World Championship, we get up there, we're competing in the uh, Darwin, <laughs> Darwin. Sub <laughs> subdivision, and we are competing with 60 robots. Yep. Um, we were um, ranked uh, probably 14th or 15th after uh, qualifications. Yeah, somewhere in there, 60, and, yeah. And um, ended up being selected by the number two alliance. Yep. Um, for uh, for the uh, elimination tournament, and the elimination tournament is first played within the division, right? And then between the divisions, the winner of that goes and plays the winners of the other eight divisions that are there. Uh, uh, so, other so, uh, five, 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 other five yeah. divisions. And so we we ended up um, competing with a team uh, from the Netherlands mm -hmm. and two teams from Detroit, the Thunder T Chickens and the Techno Dogs, Techno Dogs and the Team Rembrandt Team from, the, from, from the Netherlands, Netherlands yeah. uh, who were the European champions. Mm -hmm. with a pretty pretty robust uh, alliance. And quite frankly, they picked us. A we had a solid, reliable robot, but they knew that we knew how to play the game. Yep. And we had the scouting, not just on the Darwin division, but on all six divisions. Right. Because we had made alliances with other teams to share data right. across the competition. And so in the end, we had information about the Newton division. We had information about the Archimedes division. That you had never seen play. That we had never seen play the entire, entire time we were there. And it turned out to be critically important. Yep. Um, we ended up... Um, uh, uh, winning the Darwin division, um, uh, losing our first match and then winning two, uh, having altered our strategy exactly. and, and tactic in exactly. the game of play on the fly based on the information that we were generating. Um, and so we went on to the uh, eliminations for between the, the round six. Robin, uh, and this for the first time was the round robin yeah, where, right. yes. where each team played each other team and then the top two teams based on those results would go on. Mm -hmm. And we got to the last couple of matches where we were sitting in third place. Well, mm -hmm. third place is, 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 not is lost. Going to us. Not going anywhere. Yeah. And we needed A to win our last match and the team sitting in second place had to lose their last yes. match. The stars somehow aligned and sure enough, we are headed we, to Ford Field. Our name is called, yeah. For the finals on the Einstein Field. Amazing. This, this would be our third or fourth third. trip to Einstein, yeah. but it was uh, it was a little different because this time Einstein only had two teams, two, right? And they were going to play the best of five. That was it. Yep. And or best of best of three. The best of three, yep. and that was it. Um, and so we get over to Ford Field with. 35,000 yep. people screaming and yes, hollering. Uh, all the other awards that were being given out, the, the finals for FTC were being played in between. And we get out there and we played the first match and we lost. We lost. And pretty so, uh, yeah, it was pretty pretty severe. Uh, that, you know, 107 to 101, something like that. Yeah. But it was, a, it was a, 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 a clear victory for the opposition. Right. And so, um, once again, we went to our strategy team and said, look, we got to play the game differently. Right. How do we change up our, our, our role of play so that we do stuff that they don't expect and we do stuff that, that will uh, blunt their offense? Mm -hmm. And sure enough, we went out for the second match and played slightly differently. We moved players around played the game a little bit differently, yep. and we won the second match. The second match, so, so we're, we're in the middle, we're one and one now. One and one, we're up for, the, for the, the, the World Championship comes down to the final match. Yes. Once again, we to. changed the strategy just slightly. Halfway moving. through the match. Yep, we, we, of, yeah, we played the same uh, beginning, and then right. we, we knew that we were going to change and flip halfway through. Right. And at the end of the match, nobody knows. No, it, it had the game, the game buzzer goes. And we don't know. No and you're call, looking at the score. The and, score gets and, taken away. And, and nobody knows who's going to tension gonna, in the room. Oh, beyond tension. <laughs> uh, Mr. Randall is hiding in the men's room. Beyond <laughs> tension. Um, and by a score of 91 to 90, 
one point. Yeah. We won the world championship in 2002. Yeah. And Voyager is our world championship robot. Uh, 1218 has finished uh, first in the world, second in the world, third in the world, fourth in the world, and ninth in the world. Mm -hmm. But Voyager is our world champion. Led by one of the most organized <laughs> captain team that we've ever had. The, the, the collegiality between the, the, the leadership and the, uh, the drive team, none of the, the leaders were on the drive team. Yes, excellent point. Um, and um, yet they were able to uh, uh, engender the kind of respect that the, that leadership needed to provide mm -hmm. in order to be effective. And in point of fact, we won not because of our drive team, but because of our leadership. Absolutely. And I think that that's the important point we're going to get across. Yeah. Um, the, the, the funny thing is we finally get out of Ford Field at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> we're all absolutely dead tired. We're, we're about to drive home to Philadelphia uh, on this godforsaken bus. bus. And I look, look over to the team and I go, you know what, two weeks ago I told you that sometimes stuff happens. Yeah. And sometimes it's really nice stuff. Right, right. Sometimes it's really good stuff. <laughs> really good stuff. <laughs>